Namaste everybody, the honorable dignified speakers of today's program, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar, Prabhat Shavdari, Air Marshal Bhushan Gokhale, dignitaries who have joined this program, science lovers, teachers, students, Vinyan Bharti members, and my dear college students. We have assembled today to pay our rich tributes to the loving memory of a great son of Mother India, a renowned scientist and technocrat who led the team for conceptualizing big projects of India like OT radio telescope, giant meter radio telescope, GMRT, and the founder director of TIFR Pune, National Center of Radio Astrophysics, NCRI. Dr. Govind Sarup left for heavenly abode on 7 September 2020. Both Vidyan Bharti and Maharashtra Education Society had very close relationship with Dr. Govind Sarup. In fact, all of us are related to Dr. Govind Sarup. Though he was a great scholar and a world famous scientist, he was a humble, down to earth personality who took interest in interacting with teachers, students, and common citizens in academic institutions. Every one of us is related to him, and so all of us are a family. I will not stand between you and the eminent speakers anymore. We will go with the screening of a film, short film on Dr. Govind Sol. Thank you. I'm Govind Sarup. I'm a scientist and astronomer, particularly specialized in the field of radio astronomy. My mother she wanted me to civil engineer, but my mama said, no, no, let him do science. So I joined the Education College Allahabad to do science. Through astronomy, we want to know what the universe is. It's a different part of human, and human enterprise, human search for truth. Over 150 molecules were found by radio astronomers in, in our galaxy. But the big question is, how did the life originate on Earth? Did it grow on the surface of Earth? Did it come from outer space? Homi Baba had written to me while I was at Stanford. If you want to join us, we can have much bigger equipment. So that gave me a challenge. I should think of something truly outstanding problem. Sitting library of TFR, I said, the advantage of India is being, we are close to our equator. If I build a, not a dish, I make what is a parabolic cylinder. It starts moving the sky because Earth rotates. So if I counter to the rotation of the Earth, I can move the cylinder. I can continue following the star. So that was the concept of the Red Telescope. 500 meter long, 30 meter wide, 15,000 square meter. There was no other radio telescope in the world with that much area. At times, I mean, it's not easy to live with a scientist. He works 24 hours a day. He is extremely forgetful. Ours is arranged marriage. My father found him through a newspaper advertisement. <laughs> Coming from an economist family, and uh, all I knew is science is very hard. Uh, after I came back to India, I did B. Ed. And then taught in schools in Bombay Cathedral. And for me, he's He's Govind, that's all. Now the challenge came how to build large dishes at low cost. So I conceived of what is known now is stretch mesh attached to rope dishes. Mesh is stretched below to make a parabolic shape. It's stretched three, four points below. 
by 89 we had design the antennas by 96 all 30 antennas got done but once the challenge is there solutions come i think world over he is regarded as a person who was never shy of picking up challenges he was very aware of what is happening in the world of astronomy in the world of radio astronomy and overall physics of astronomy radio telescope is like lens radio waves are much larger wavelengths thousands of million times larger so you require lenses billion times bigger a parabolic dish of a small diameter to get very high resolution we put antennas at large distances so we have 30 antennas located over 25 kilometers now from each antenna we put a there's a parabolic dish which focuses which collects light coming from radio waves from the stars or galaxies using modern electronics we are able to correlate them and make beautiful pictures So one of the most important areas in which GMRT has contributed uh, is in the study of galaxy clusters. These are extremely faint and therefore you need a very large telescope at the, like the GMRT to observe them. Uh you also need sufficiently high resolution which the GMRT provides. You have to have innovation. Innovation doesn't come alone with the engineering training. It has to be combination with scientific training i think his basic education is important and he has to have ambition lot of great people who have succeeded are not einsteins that was a great film took us to the memories of dr gobin soro we begin our tributes with dr vijay batkar dr vijay batkar is national president of vidyan bharati a world famous computer scientist known for supercomputers and chancellor of nalanda university dr vijay batkar please <clears throat> thank you i am seeing all of you in front of me but most importantly I see the picture of Dr. Gobind Saro. Uh, he is smiling like a child. I think this one thing which um, distinguishes himself anywhere he went. His great smile, childlike smile, I would say. That's what I remember on this occasion as well. Of course, we have lost him. We remember him on this occasion. We are paying our tributes to him. I remember I came to Pune in uh, 1987, and uh, in 1988, Muri Padwa Day. I remember that day. and we had invited all many distinguished scientists who are many of our present here dr mashulkar dr goin swarup was there he had come on the pune university campus and um, i had also taken a decision at that time that uh, if the supercomputer project has to be located and i don't didn't want it to be in delhi and uh, whereas the, at that time most people are insisting that um, the project should be located in delhi like C dot doctors, I think the Sam Peter himself led, led that initiative. Doctor Gowari Kar also wanted me to be, but I felt I think uh, we need to discuss Doctor Goin Suru myself that kind of thing. That uh, there's a massive such great projects of scientific projects did not be located in Delhi. I think and, um, for one reason that I think a lot of time will be spent on scientific pol. politics so <laughs> say um, but anyway i think i did we decided to come to pune university pune and then pune university uh, dr md bhire was the vice chancellor at that time and we had invited for the launch of cdac program or cdac project a super campus super computer project on pune university campus dr goin swarup was there but i really got introduced to him um in 1991 when we unveiled our first supercomputer our param 8000 and uh, dr goin swarup is to take lot of interest in that particular electronics he was really a man i think uh, a engineer par excellence in the sense this one and he was very interested in any kind of engineering he, he felt that we should create engineering marvels i think gmrt 
is a real tribute to him i think uh, uh, which is india's i think scientific marvel what even at that time uh, 1991 he was so glad i think when we uh, showed him the, the supercomputer architecture and what we did and he was the one person who could really admire it in terms of engineering he was interested in every detail and all that often in our discussions i remember he used to recall stanford and his um, his professors at that time i don't remember all the name, the names but um, uh, he was very interested in electronics and we should develop a strong capability in building large electronic systems uh, using the components in india he always insisted that this component every component must be developed in india and that's how we started vlsi design and many other things uh, in uh, while developing supercomputer at cdi i remember his student uh, dr subramanyam um who was in elect i think was helping the uh, professor goin sarup on all electronics matters and he felt that the entire hardware must be made in india what he talk about today about atmanirbhar i think he, he was really epitomizes the development of that and one thing which i liked about him is that and he then, then of course he said that i want this your first supercomputer as soon as it's ready we had just created one model and i want to take it for uh uh gmrd project right uh, to narend gaon kodak i think that uh, when the whole thing was being erect, erected at that time the, the antennas were being erected at that time he showed me the place that your computer must be one of the first installations must be gmrd and that's how i got more and more introduced to him both on the pune university campus as well as at the kodak i think where the, uh, the antennas were being erected in and i think i one thing i admire about him is that always he was explain the engineering details of that thing how it is being constructed how it is being manufactured which companies must be involved what kind of things are required for really building such large projects so this child like enthusiasm or the infectious enthusiasm which inspired me many many times of course eventually we developed the computer and then he personally went for installation and how the processing is done how the signal processing will be done in what manner what mathematics is involved and he was experienced at stanford uh, i was really our uh, every time i met he narrated the whole story i think dr mitchell could is here remember that and you remember like a child uh, what he what he has done again and again and again and of course he would see our students around him and a lot of students used to come to jmrt i think we, and he would explain to each one of them and um, uh, to all these like like the school children what um, so i think he was a really inspiration person of great swan he was a great engineer i think um, uh, that was must be admired and and uh, and he's always felt what how nation can progress how nation can come forward by developing this engineering prowess or scientific prowess uh, later i think to, uh, i remember when the um, md bidet prosam ji bidet talked about it that we don't have enough scientists i think all people are getting and he was he was lamented always that most people are moving to engineering most of course medicine and of course engineering large number of people but not many people are coming to science which is not a good idea i think which is not a good idea and he felt that in like cdac we should create we should create um, new institutes who are predominantly devoted to science um, applied science he talked about engineering sciences what i think he always remembered how stanford university the university like stanford etc or mit have come forward he will remember he will remember the professor he will remember the great contributions and we must create at that time professor mg bide had talked about the, the idea of icer science edu we are not named it like icer at that time but science engineering education science education must and, and research must move forward and uh, i remember dr mashelkar and uh, i remember uh, discussions with uh, professor gons going so was i think early uh, four or four five of us were very enthusiastic idea, idea about it and how should be uh, positioned and all that kind of thing but i think he is also professor goin surup is an architect of i think the modern icer pune we see now uh, the five icers and that's a major contribution in addition to gmrt i think that is truly a major contribution of professor goin surup along with professor bide dr mashelkar eventually provided the whole campus uh, the, for uh, uh, this um, icer i think that was one thing that providing area i remember how difficult it is to get even the campus or something some area and i was very keen that 
we must come on campus i think pune university has done a good thing by inviting ayuka inviting gmrt inviting cdag and the national center for cell sciences and on that road is dr mashal ka often says that highest intellectual density i think per square inch or per square foot is there and uh, i think this is all the i think the great uh, creation of um uh, dr govind swarup often i remember i remember bina and i remember professor govind swarup and his smile and his enthusiastic thing and he's always then that this must be done that must be done everything must be done here and uh, why if we can't do it and um, and he will give some ideas great ideas he was a great teacher i think i remember always with the student with the students he was very very happy i of course i am not in um, not work with him gmrt but how uh, uh, enthusiastic he was for all this marvels uh, which are to be created uh, in india and he was very keen and eventually of course he took our first supercomputer got it installed got it demonstrated and then subramanian will come and will do the i think all the algorithms for signal processing and connecting it of course further processing which will require any amount of computing power so i really remember him and we have personally worked i pay my tributes on behalf of gyan bharti on behalf of all our institutions and all our engineers who worked with us and who always remember him for his great inspirational presence wherever he went so um, be of all of us vigyan bharti in many people i think who uh, he won the campus often he came to the campus or cdag building of course as he came to jm gmrt we remember him i really miss him very much uh, on this occasion thank you thank you madhvi time for me to to start yeah well uh, friends i first uh, kind of uh, i would say saw professor govind swarup uh, sometime in uh, mid 80s dr ramanna was chairman of atomic commission and i was there with him for something and uh, i didn't know but apparently there was a presentation uh by professor govind swarup on gmrt gmrt was uh, was on kind of you know at idea stage uh, the, i think the fair work about the project was done but the project sanction was to take place and this was discussion in that context and when the time uh, sort of we reached the time for the scheduled time for this presentation uh, and i was still with dr ramanna so he dragged me in so that's how i went to the lecture hall and uh, witnessed and heard the presentation made by govind swarup what struck me was uh, coming from tifr talking about radio astronomy and all so i actually entered i was quite young in those days so not much as mature as perhaps i am today so i was a reluctant spectator but govind swarup was talking about uh, the you know structures and the, the stretched wire concept for the antenna and the detailed discussion he had with uh, tata consulting engineers on their finite element analysis and all and actually i made uh, immediate connect with him because that was something uh, which was a language which i i could understand and on science i could only figure out that one of the objectives of gmrt at that time was to look for life uh, in the outer universe and there was a fair bit of uh, discussion on that so that was my first introduction to dr govind swarup and i immediately realized uh, at that time and uh, that realization got reinforced progressively and i in fact now very boldly say that if you want to look at a baba like scientist it is only govind swarup 
the tremendous uh, research technology connect the or science technology connect that you can see uh, dr watkar talked about the engineer in govind swarup and that's actually very true later on of course there were many occasions where uh, uh, i uh, sort of met him one on one uh, because uh, the a fair bit of gmrt's uh, antenna controls was being done by sheshadri in bark and of course we lost sheshadri so it, that work was continued uh, including field work and all by govind rajan and his colleagues and in that context the project manager that he was he used to go to every workplace to monitor the progress identify the difficulty and if there are any hurdles he used to go to the uh, the higher echelons in the organization and uh, i have met uh, professor govind swarup several times uh, essentially to iron out uh, issues in in that implementation later when i uh, became chairman of atomic energy commission i realized you know uh, atomic energy being a sensitive organization all foreign scientists visiting atomic energy uh i you know a paper comes to chairman ac and i uh, was quite struck by the fact that twice a year from gmrt a huge list of foreign uh, scientists astronomers observers would come that list could be something like 30 40 50 scientists long every six months and i realized how popular gmrt is with uh, astronomers radio astronomers all over the world and actually uh, so that was a testimony not uh, just our saying it but the world recognizing that gmrt is one of the of course it's perhaps the only one of its kind but it is so popular so useful tool for observation among scientists all over the world and with the upgrade now and of course we hear more of that from dr gupta but i believe it continues to be the most popular instrument uh, in its uh, in its class later uh, uh, along with professor chitre we were talking about setting up the the center for basic sciences in mumbai university on kalina campus and that was about the time when there was discussion going on about uh, the uh, basically icer was a name came later but basically about the virtue of uh, a five year integrated program after plus 2 level in sciences and uh, because we were involved in uh, the cbs which also was essentially similar i i know uh, professor viji bide and uh, professor govind swarup uh, in fact they came to bombay a couple of times to discuss that after that i think whenever i met him this was the topic for him to talk and he has sent me several notes Uh, about the merits and uh, the importance of doing such a thing and obviously he was uh, when uh, icers came into existence uh, uh, i think it must have been for him a matter of significant uh, satisfaction the last point uh, that i wish to mention here is uh, when it came to dealing with mega science you know issue arose that we are having too many mega sciences and it's taking away too much of resources and uh, of course i have been making arguments about uh, how important it is uh, to sort of uh, both in terms of uh, putting india in the center stage because these are all international projects and also creating opportunities for indian scientists to work with uh, both cutting edge science as well as cutting edge uh, 
technology. And then there was a discussion in the context of, I think, 30 meter telescope. And uh, uh, we actually were together in planning commission at that time uh, with Dr. Kasturi Rangan to, to make a case of uh, mega science programs in general and 30 meter telescope in, in particular. And I remember Professor Govind Sarup insisting on not joining this project simply by making cash contribution. He used to insist that you must make sure that 80, 90% of that contribution must be in kind. We must make those countries in India and contribute. And that has been the hallmark of, uh, I think there are some exceptions, but uh, most of the mega science project and uh, I remember Professor Govind Swaroop in terms of, you know, this insistence, extremely, extremely important. So there are many such memories. I am so happy that we were with him on his uh, 90th birthday uh, in Pune. Uh, now it is only for us to uh, sort of uh, continue that tradition. Uh, carry forward his, his legacy, in which, as I said earlier, the science technology connect is the most important part. And I think in the current stage of our country, if, if in terms of science and technology, if you need something most, uh, that is this very important science technology connect. And I think you can't have a better example than Professor Govind Swaru. So I think uh, the best way to perpetuate his memory would be to create that culture in the country. Let me on this occasion uh, pray to God uh, that uh, uh, he gives peace to the soul of Professor Govind Swaru and uh, the strength to his family, uh, Mrs. Swaroop, Bina Swaroop, whom also I happen to know quite well. Uh, and, uh, but I think uh, for us, it's upon us now to continue that legacy. Thank you. We go to Dr. Raghunath Mashekar, National Research Professor, Thank Chairman you. of National Innovation Foundation, President of Global Research Alliance. I request Dr. Mashekar to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, first, Bhatkar, then Kakurkar, then Mashekar. Uh, Maharashtra is full of uh, uh, curse. And uh, I am I'm, I'm very happy to be a part uh, of this uh, family. I remember I returned to India in 1976, joining uh, National Chemical Laboratory. But I met uh, Govind only in late 80s. And I have a distinct memory of our first meeting, exactly like what uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar said, uh, the childlike smile, a lovely, lovely smile. It was so endearing. And that uh, was the start of our enduring uh, uh, relationship, I must say. Of course, we all know that uh, Govind was a global pioneer in radio astronomy. Uh, no wonder the popular tributes that appeared uh, after he left us in newspapers, uh, the headlines were the telescope man of India. And of course, that was true. Uti, JMRT were not only indigenous, but also ingenious. Ingenious in terms of what he himself described as a frugal innovation, the cost and the way he basically did it. Uh, affordability and excellence going together was his hallmark. But to me, he was not just a telescope man. He had a telescopic vision of Indian science. Very rare. Microscopic as well as uh, telescopic. So he was a unique builder, I would say, of uh, Indian science. Uh, what did I admire most in Govind? Let me tell you. There are three drivers uh, in life that are important. Purpose, perseverance, 
and passion. Govind never lost sight of the big purpose, the North Star purpose, as they say. Then the perseverance. It is always too early to give up, you would say. Winners never quit and quitters never win. Govind had uh, this passion, which was absolutely in abundance. But Govind had something extra, persuasion. And I have been a witness to this quality of his. Let me give an example, because both uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar and Dr. Anil Kapoorkar have made a reference to that. But let me give you a view from my uh, lens. Uh, remember, Govind was very passionate about building a world-class integrated scientific institution. And I remember the same presentations that Dr. Bhatkar saw uh, Dr. Kakorkar saw, I have also seen a number of times, basically. So he and uh, Professor V.G. Bide had prepared a blueprint. And it found its way to SACPM, the Science Advisory Committee to the Prime Minister, and I happened to be a member. And SACPM decided to take up this issue of building new institution. And the charge of uh, making a presentation to the Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh, was given to me. And I remember I did not want to compare ourselves with Europe and US, etc. I just compared ourselves with Asia how Taiwan was moving, China was moving, Korea was moving, and so on and so forth. And I said how they are advancing science by building new institutes of science. And then I remember making a cryptic remark saying that in 2008, my talk was in 2006. In 2008, when Indian Institute of Science will celebrate 100 years, uh, it will be the only institute and not built by government. It was built by Tata's. In fact, I also added that uh, if you sit in a rickshaw, uh, the Rikshawala knows Indian Institute of Science as Tata Institute of Science. And that, of course, uh, led to a lot of uh, uh, discussion because already uh, Govind's note had uh, sort of fueled uh, the dialogue. And Govind's persuasion was very important. I remember distinctly a meeting with the HRD Minister Arjun Singh, where both Professor Yashpal and Govind were present. And Govind, I must say, was at his persuasive best. Uh, and of course, our chairman, Professor Siena Rao, played a huge role. Because it's not just the power of idea, the power of execution that matters. And execution in government to make things happen is extremely complex. So I remember he championing it and piloting it through the complex government uh, uh, machinery. What else did I admire in uh, Govind? Once again, Vijay had made a, a reference to it. It was the Govind spirit. The Govind spirit of being Atmanirbhar. We talk about Atmanirbhar Bharat today, and I always add Atma Vishwas to it because you can't create Atma Nirbhar Bharat without Atma Vishwas. And uh, uh, Govind was one who had not only uh, Atma Nirbharta but Atma Vishwas. So, what happens is that I uh, uh, get to talk to a lot of young students, webinars, this, that, and the other. And when I talk about Atma Nirbhar Bharat, I talk about Atma Vishwas. And I want to I persuade them that look, this is not something new. This is something that we have done for years, and I cite uh, Govind's example. So while digging that, I found uh, uh, sort of uh, one story, which I have not seen uh, being mentioned in this tribute. So I will uh, sort of make up for it and mention this. You know, when Mrs. Gandhi, India, then prime minister, she was worried about technology imports. And she asked scientists uh, through Vikram Sarabhai to name three areas where the imports could be stopped uh, completely and we could uh, do technology development in India. And I'm told that Govind put up his hand and shouted antennas. The Indian government had advertised for a turnkey project to develop an earth station of uh, at Irvi in uh, Maharashtra. And it was supposed to be given to a foreign contractor. But I'm very proud to say Govind got the project instead. And Govind set up that uh, antenna fabrication and design group within the Atomic Energy Commission. The antenna they developed was then used for government by a government for a strategic commission. And the RV group was uh, later transferred to uh, ECIL and uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar will know more about it. And much later, engineers from the RV group formed the germ of a deep space communication network in the Indian Space Research Organization. Why I'm mentioning this? This is something special. Atma Nirbhar as well as Atma Vishwas 50 years ago. That is the Govind Swarup uh, uh, spirit. I must say, on a personal note, my own respect and my own trust in Govind was very high. I remember when I was the director of MCL during 1989-95, I wanted the scientists to get a sense of 
the rest of the world. I would get Banu Koyaji, uh, I would uh, get economists and so on and so forth. And I remember all the ancient chemists had no interest in astronomy at all. I invited Govind Sarup to give a talk on how great discoveries made by radio astronomers had helped us in enhancing our understanding of the universe. And I still remember that auditorium was absolutely mesmerized. My trust in him was so much that when I became the director general of CSR in 1995, I had to set up committees uh, for the first Bhatnagar uh, 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 Prize. And I remember when it came to physics, who was the choice of uh, chairman, my most trusted friend, uh, Dr. Uh, Govind Sarup. Uh, I have interacted with Govind very closely, and both of us were involved in selection of the winners of the prestigious HK Firudhi Award in Science and Technology. And I must say, Govind's standards of excellence were so high that invariably we went by his judgment and we were never uh, proved uh, wrong. So I'm giving you a secret. Uh, those who won the prize, they would know where it came from, actually. Uh, there's a lot that I can say about Govind in terms of our personal friendship. He and Bina never miss coming to our house for Ganesh Chaturthi, excepting uh, for the one last year. Uh, because of his health reasons. And in fact, uh, when I and Vaishali, my wife, went to see Bina to pay our condolences, uh, she told us uh, how sorry uh, Govin and she were feeling that they missed it for the first time in uh, so many years. So Govin and I had a very, very special, I would say, personal bond. Uh, we really uh, miss him. And uh, while I received a number of phone calls to pay tributes to him, I said one line that was very common. I said, Govind was not an individual, but an institution himself. Of course, being uh, besides being an institution builder, and I always repeat that individuals go, but institutions remain and remain forever. To me, Govind as an institution will live forever. I'm uh, grateful to Vigyan Bharti for giving me this opportunity to pay my humble tributes to this great legend. And I end by conveying our deepest heartfelt condolences to his beloved family, Bina, Anju, Vipin, and their children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Mashalkar. We go to Dr. Yashwant Gupta, the present director of NCRA TIFR. Um, hello, uh, Namaskar and good morning to everybody. Um, if you permit me, I will share my screen uh, because I have a few things to share via the presentation. Uh, shall I do that? Yes, yes, please. Um, OK, uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes. we can see that. Yes. So. Uh, my uh, association with uh, Govind Swaroop uh, goes back many years um, from the time I was a student in uh, 1988. Um, and so it's been a long journey with him for almost 30 years and a very close and personal one. So in that sense, some of my tributes here will be a little bit more personal, uh, but I hope to bring out uh, elements of him which were really amazing. So I'll just start with a brief history. My first interaction was actually a phone call. So at that time, I was a PhD student at the University of California, happily, uh, you know, working in radio astronomy. And to be, uh, to be frank, I hadn't heard much about uh, the Indian radio astronomy activities. And then one day I get a phone call and uh, you know, those days, phone calls were rare. You'd get once a month, typically from your family. And so I was surprised to see a phone call from an institution in India. And uh, pretty soon, uh, Govind Saroop was on the line uh, asking me about my work, uh, what research I was doing, and uh, urging me uh, to come and visit them next time when I'm in India. And, and that really took me by surprise uh, to be uh, called uh, in, at, at that stage of the career to be talked about by Professor Govind Saroop. And, uh, but 
uh, I, I did take that opportunity, that offer. And when I was in India next, uh, I visited uh, this campus in Pune, uh, where I now work. And uh, it was very early stages. The buildings were just getting ready. So, you know, it was not a very, uh, a very great site. But I, I could see that there was excitement in the air. There was, there was uh, people who were working very hard. So I gave a colloquium. I described the research I was doing. And there were interesting questions. And all that was nice. But then, you know, after that, in the afternoon, Govin uh, called me uh, to his office for a discussion. And that's when I realized uh, the kind of person he was. I mean, he, he of course, uh, discussed more in detail about my talk, my research. But pretty soon, he moved on to tell what they were trying to do to uh, the challenge of taking up a large project like the GMRT. And it was amazing how he was able to catch my attention to convince me about uh, the importance of uh, being part of this amazing exercise. And so uh, I actually then decided uh, with some trepidation because um, I was directly without taking up what people normally did was a few years of postdoc and then take up a position. I decided to come back and, and take up the assignment uh, in uh, the GMRT group, which later became the National Center for Radio Astrophysics. And, um, uh, and I have to say, I have no regrets having taken that decision uh, right then. And it's largely because of uh, the guidance that Govind Sroop gave uh, in the early years. Uh, so when I joined, uh, he it gave me freedom, uh, but also gave me responsibility, uh, gave me some difficult uh, uh, problems in the electronics of the GMRT to understand. Um, in fact, uh, one of the first problems that I remember he gave me uh, was uh, to understand the only nonlinear device in the entire GMRT receiver chain, which is an automatic gain control system. Everything, you know, when you think of a, a radio telescope receiver, it's a, uh, supposed to be a perfectly linear system. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't work well. And this was the only device which is there. It was in inserted to protect uh, the uh, laser diodes uh, being used for the optical fiber transmission. And I had to sit down and work out uh, how this nonlinear device affects the performance of the system. And so, so you know, he, he gave some interesting, tough things to do. And then at some point, uh, he put me in charge of building the digital system for the GMRT. And, and uh, you know, after that, we moved on. So this is one of my first memories um, uh, of being with him. Uh, and we are all looking up intently at something interesting that's happening. And what was happening was a really a historic moment. It was the raising of the first GMRT antenna back in 1992. And <clears throat> this uh, is my first really, uh, you know, uh, memory of, of uh, being uh, with him in the exciting journey of GMRT. But over the years, um, uh, I learned many things from him. And I learned many things about him. And that's what I'd like to focus a little bit on. Uh, others have described some of his outstanding capabilities, and this is just uh, my take on uh, some of the outstanding traits that he had. The first that I found was the ability to dream big, and this has been talked about, whether it is the UT radio telescope and the GMRT, but there were others. Uh, there was a very big dream that he had to build a giant equatorial radio telescope, an international facility to be located somewhere near the equator. Uh, and the likely places were either Africa or Indonesia. And this was one of the first of these large international projects. Uh, unfortunately, it did not take off. But uh, it, the concept grew and is now what we call the Square Kilometer Array, which is one of the large uh, multinational projects that Dr. Kakotka referred to, of which we are part of. And many of the seed ideas of what the Square Kilometer Array should look like and what kind of science it should pursue uh, came from Govind himself. And um, just recently, uh, in the newsletter of the SKA, uh, they, there is a very rich tribute paid to him, uh, acknowledging his uh, uh, early seeding ideas for what the Square Kilometer Array project should be. But in addition to dreaming big, he, he just had that the dedication and the drive and the ability to convert these dreams into realities. 
And that is something that was really uh, amazing that, uh, as Dr. Mashelkar said, uh, the, he did not give up and uh, was able to achieve these targets. And uh, going on from there, uh, the big targets that we talked about, the UT and the GMRT are really testimonials uh, to his capabilities and his outstanding leadership. And the thing that we really should reflect on, the UT radio telescope, which was built in the 1960s and made ready in 1970, uh, nobody knew how long it would last. It was a very innovative design. and uh, But to his credit, uh, to the level and capability of engineering that he managed, even in those early times where there wasn't that much skilled uh, person power in the country, the UT telescope still is going strong and uh, we are actually upgrading it uh, to a next level. And the GMRT uh, is of course a phenomena, but the thing about the GMRT, which has already also been emphasized, that it was really an amazing and a very audacious project. And that's what I said he was able to dream big to give the world's largest low frequency radio telescope for just 50 crores, uh, $15 million. It was amazing. Uh, there were very few people in the international community who believed that this could be pulled off, uh, but he did it. He not only conceived it, he made it a reality and it is there for all of us uh, to see. And the, the way he managed that, as has again been emphasized, uh, there was innovation. There was clever innovation. And I just emphasized two of those one which has already been talked about, the SMART concept. And uh, he had a way of acronyms, uh, which is stretched mesh attached to rope presses. It was a completely indigenous idea developed by him, along with the colleagues, uh, the team members, and the TCE engineers. And what it did is to allow one to construct an antenna of 45 meters in diameter, weighing less than 100, and, uh, less than 100 tons which is unimaginable. Uh, and that is what made the GMRT possible on such a small budget uh, that uh, uh, was there for building it. The other one, just, just one of many other innovations. Uh, at that time, uh, optical fibers were new in terms of their technology, and there was not much use of optical fibers, certainly not in radio astronomy, where we uh, signals were transmitted from the remote antennas to the central facility using radio frequency links, uh, which had their own problems. But he was smart enough uh, to see the future and realize that uh, we should be using optical fibers in order to pick up the signals from the antennas and transmit them over these long distances of over 15 uh, kilometers uh, to the central processing facility. And uh, that was easier said than done because there wasn't that much expertise in the country especially for long haul analog uh, transmission over wider bandwidths. Uh, we were wanting uh, at least uh, 60 megahertz, uh, 50 megahertz of bandwidth to be transmitted. Uh, but to his credit, uh, managed that, put together a young team uh, of you know, fresh graduates uh, with the guidance from one of the senior RF engineers. And they made a team and uh, actually built this. And this is one feature of the GMRT that has really served us in, in, in good stead because uh, this is what gives us the stability of the quality of the signal that we get from the antennas and allows us to be able to calibrate the whole array in, in, a, in a convenient fashion. So uh, one thing that struck me was his expertise in multiple fields. Uh, all branches of engineering that we have already heard about and we are familiar, but as a, he was an excellent administrator, project management, he knew how to do it, man management, how to handle different kinds of problems, uh, be it administrative, financial, all of this he did without losing the focus on the science. So anytime you want, he would be uh, ready to switch back to the first passion, which is what science can be done with the facilities. And uh, this is just some pictures showing that how easily and readily he would be deep into any of the engineering. Uh, so here, this is uh, with actually with this is with the servo uh, system that uh, 
Dr. Kakodkar described that was done in collaboration with, with BARC. And um, uh, all of this, um, uh, given that his degree was in BSc and MSc, uh, it was amazing how much of the engineering that he had learned and picked up and was able to, um, uh, to have excellent command over. The other thing that uh, we found working personally with him was his amazing multitasking ability. I remember the first time being called into his office uh, for, a, for a formal meeting, and I went all prepared uh, about what I was doing. But I found four other people uh, in that office, and there were four other discussions going on. One was from finance, one was the site engineer, and uh, one was uh, a legal person. And, and I thought maybe I had come at the wrong time to the wrong meeting. But no, he asked me to sit, he asked me a question, and uh, and I gave him a short reply, and then he switched over and was talking to the next person, and then the next one. I thought maybe he's forgotten about me, but five minutes later, he came back, he said, look, this is what you said, I thought about it, no, this is how it should be. It was amazing, that's when I realized that uh, uh, probably where people got the idea of a multi-core CPU, there was these parallel processing that was going on in his brain and without losing track of any of the conversations and the discussions it was just amazing. He had this uncanny skill to identify and attract the best people and build the teams. And that is what really uh, uh, made a success out of the projects that he undertook. And so, so I, and I, I, I recall various examples of people uh, 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 we discussed about antenna experts. Uh, he was able to find the right people in the various places, attract them a bit like he attracted me to come and join the place. I know many colleagues uh, who were pulled in by his ability to attract. And um, not only that, he was able to interact with all kinds of people and get the best out of them. He had this knack of judging what is it that you were good at and what is the kind of responsibility that could be given to you. And uh, he would do that with full faith and full confidence. And of course, he would help us and guide us if we ran into trouble or difficulties. Uh, but uh, he has excellent judgment of how to do this. And he himself was ready. This is really a very interesting example. So uh, I showed that first picture when the antenna was being raised. This is how the antennas were lifted. They were actually winched up. And there were teams of uh, people who would do this winching. So here he is with his, all his senior team members uh, uh, you're uh, turning uh, the winch and, uh, uh, and and participating with them to in the lifting of the antennas. But the, uh, but all the way from there uh, to whether it was eminent scientists from across the world. These are all famous pulsar astronomers uh, with whom he's interacting at the GMRT. Uh, to uh, the people from different walk uh, from chief ministers to the president of the country, he was able to connect, link up, and, and communicate with, or with all. Uh, and finally, uh, as a human being, uh, he had some amazing traits. First, I found that he was an ultimate optimist. He was forever looking at the bright side, never willing uh, to uh, be taken down with things that went wrong. And he was an amazingly down-to-earth person. And this, in spite of all his achievements that we have been talking about, he, has, uh, he had more than 20 different awards and accolades from all over the world. But in spite of that, you could go talk to him anytime. He was ready to talk on all matters and always uh, with a smiling face. And uh, this is just one memory about two years ago, uh, reaching 90, but he would always participate in all uh, the uh, uh, functions of the NCRA family uh, whenever his health would permit. And so this is uh, with us two years ago at Diwali. And uh, so uh, he has left behind a legacy, which is not only for us to cherish, but as was mentioned, to grow. And the, uh, these major facilities that he created, which we continue to run and benefit from and also to improve, as well as the strong institutions like the NCRA, of which we are, uh, uh, we are members and very proud of. And um, it is for us to strive to carry the legacy forward. And we've been doing that uh, in a manner which I hope 
uh, he would found uh, uh, would uh, would find something that uh, would be uh, to be proud of. So we completed a major upgrade of the GMRT, which was mentioned earlier. Uh, we did that last year after six years of hard work. And I remember uh, this was something that, of course, uh, he was watching this from the sidelines. He was not uh, very active, but he was following what was going on. And he would often challenge me with the ideas that we had for what we should be doing and uh, the technical questions that do you think this can be done? Uh, is this correct? Is this right? It was amazing that how up to date he was uh, with uh, what we were trying to do. Uh, but uh, and so this the upgrade uh, that we finished uh, with uh, all the next generation technology development, much of which uh, seeds were laid by him. Uh, but we were happy that we could finish that. And it was really a privilege uh, to have this inaugurated on his 90th birthday celebrations last year. Um, and uh, uh, this is that historic moment where he pressed uh, the button uh, which inaugurated the upgraded GMRT. And um, uh, it was a most memorable event uh, coinciding with his 90th birthday. And uh, it is something that uh, uh, this is probably the, the last public appearance uh, that he was there. And, and starting with that first photograph that I had with him. This is the last, probably the last photograph uh, that I have with him. And so he leaves some lasting memories uh, of his true leadership. And for many of us, more than that, a father figure who uh, really um, showed us uh, the direction and guided us for so many years. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gupta. I now request Dr. Somak Roy Chaudhary, the director of Ayuqua, to speak. No. I'm saying my voice is choking up after that tribute. Thank you very much, uh, Yashwant, for that tribute. Uh, I, I'll say a very brief word. Uh, um, my uh, involvement uh, with uh, Govind uh, Swaroop uh, is very similar to Yashwant's. I first met him in 1981 when I was an undergraduate in Presidency College, Kolkata. I'd come together with a scholarship group to look at uh, um, the UT radio telescope uh, with a bunch of 18, 19 year olds. And the person who had built it, the giant of the field, Govind Swaroop, himself came up from Bangalore and showed all these young kids bouncing around everywhere, showing how innovative this telescope was and what it can be done. It was that day I decided I want to become an astronomer. It is because of Govind that I become an astronomer. I did not know, I'd never met a real scientist, a practicing scientist, international scientist before that. Um, and uh, in that way, uh, uh, he, he ins uh, that inspiration stayed with me all through my life. And I've seen this all, all around me. I worked abroad for a very long time. And, uh, and I got involved, of course, uh, uh, with uh, GMRT when I worked in Ayuka in the 90s. And then I went back again uh, abroad and I was a professor at uh, the University of England. And from my entire, uh, my 14 years there, I came through the year working with GMRT as a scientist, um, along with my students and collaborators. So I was not on Dr. Kakodskar's list because I'm an Indian citizen. But, uh, um, but there was a whole bunch of Indian uh, scientists working abroad who also came from all over the world uh, and just for the, um, for the facility he had built and the inspiration. Um, uh, and I, now one of the things that I see is something that has been mentioned before, the Atma Vishwas and Atma Nibhar, um, that uh, this uh, thing that uh, Dr. Kakurkar mentioned of insisting that the TMT uh, we do not pay cash for it, but uh, but for uh, but pay in kind. I am now one of the one of the uh, in charge of one of the institutes who's in charge of doing that. Seventy percent uh, of uh, our contribution to the TMT is paid in kind, and we can see how Indian industry is benefiting from it. We are going and finding uh, places in India where uh, where things can be built for the TMT project. So this is this is exactly uh, the vision of of Govind Swaroop. 
from that. And, and uh, we also have talked about the frugal uh, innovation, the Jugar, um, that, that he showed us how to do. He was the embodiment of it. Um, um, I, uh, I'm back in India as a practicing scientist, also largely because of Govind Sarup. Uh, all through my career, these phone calls that Yashwan talked about, I had long phone calls with him uh, where he talked about how, how important it is um, uh, for us to work um, uh, together to, to build Indian science. And uh, that inspiration is still with me. He's one of the people I will miss a lot in my life. Thank you. Speaker, Air Marshal Bhushan Gokhale, the retired Vice Chief of Air Staff, and presently the President of Maharashtra Education Society. I thank everybody for participating. There is no formal thanks at the end. After his speech, we will all stand up for Shanti Mantra, and with that, the program is successful. Air Marshal Gokhale, please. Thank you, Professor Kulkarni. All respected speakers who have mentioned a lot about the Rushitulya personality of Professor Govind Soru. Amazing person. And like it was mentioned, there was a childlike smile that he had because it, you know it was never intimidating to go and talk to him. He was so always very humble, no ego about him as to what he did. And so it was a wonderful experience to not only me, but whenever he has come to MES, I'm told that all the students used to talk to him and he would talk to every student on various issues. Of course, many things have been spoken about him, but I think using the hillside at Uti was a fantastic innovative application that he did for raising that particular antenna. And likewise, there is science and technology when we talk about enmeshing it. I think he was a classic example of how we can take this forward. As regards his own uh, you know, words that he had mentioned in that video, he says, that when challenges are there, solutions will come. And I think he's shown that every time where you know, all the antennas have been made. And that actually science has also helped in what my background is in the military, in various antennas today that are being made by DRDO and various other ECIL and things like that. When I met him once and I happened to ask him as to what is the use of radio astronomy in space science, especially because, as I say, that the contiguous medium of air, the space, and the outer space are unfortunately becoming the new frontiers of conflict. And in that case, he was so very excited to explain to me about so many things, including what he called the space situational awareness. And he told me to look up what the US has got, a National Radio Astronomy Observatory in West Virginia. And there, when I was going through that particular literature and later, which I discussed with him, he was mentioned, it was mentioned that there is a high accuracy of orbits that can be found out. There is also the uplink downlink of communication, which can be established. There is detection of asteroids and some stray orbital, uh, you know, the debris and various things that can be made out. But when I was talking to Dr. Pramod Kale from ISRO, who's also in Pune, the solar flares used to affect our solar panels on the satellite. So, you know, there are so many things that radio astronomy, actually speaking, has used in space. And he was connected to ISRO in some way. He had made a, actually contributed to a satellite, which was to go up along with the Soviet Union. But then it broke up. So that time, that particular, I believe, uh, uh, project didn't go through. But of course, later on, when ISRO has sent out a particular satellite in 2015, you know, it could be that there is some contribution on radio astronomy, which has been of help. So I think he was a very towering personality, very humble and very approachable. And I think we at MES were also very, very, uh, Maharashtra Society were very fortunate that many students have been able to interact with him. As a mark of tribute to his memory, I'm very happy to announce that Maharashtra Indian Society at their Garwari College of Science is going to institute an award in his memory for MSc physics student, especially because a lot has been spoken about basic sciences and scientific temper. And I think such a award will uh, sort of enthuse young students to do better in basic sciences, physics, and other areas of science and technology. I think, you know, it has been a, 
uh, wonderful uh, to go through all his contributions. And I think he'll always be remembered as a great scientist. And I thank on behalf of MES and Vigyan Bharti, all who are here present, and request all of us that we stand for one minute in his memory. Thank you. Jai Hind. <laughs> Om Shanti. Over to Kashina Devdar. Shanti Mantra Karne Jaro. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shant Ishant Ishant